Welcome to All About Videography, my name is Doro Levy and in this episode we will go in depth over the Xiaomi Cran 2S. Let me start with that. If you are looking for a gimbal that will not limit you using heavy and long lenses and at the same time will work rather smooth then this one is for you. So the Crane 2S build quality is top notch and I'm not talking about just the gimbal durability, I'm talking about the things that makes a difference. Like the decorative gripping surface at the top of the handle that makes it easier to loosen and tighten the handle and also to anchor your hand from slipping when you operating the gimbal. The carbon fiber handle that helps with reducing the overall weight of the gimbal. The mount thread with the crown gear which makes it uh, harder for the accessories to get loose. The camera mount which by itself is innovation and I will get to it in a moment. A new one inch OLED screen that makes it easier to go through the entire menu so you don't have to use the app to change parameters. Upgraded access locking mechanism. So now it is a two-phase locking design the gimbal can be locked in a storage position and a full open position simply as that. You can also use the locking mechanism while you are balancing the gimbal. There's also adjustable locking latch. You can adjust how tight or loose you want the latch to be. Last but not least is the very precise joystick. When you move the joystick left, right for panning and up and down for tilting, it does precisely that. There are other gimbals that when you tilt with the joystick, it will pan as well at the same time because you move the joystick a little bit to the left but with the Crane 2S joystick it's really hard to miss. Also the joystick potentiometer is very manageable. You can control the speed easily with the movement of your thumb. Now if you want to change the joystick's default speed it is under advanced speed control. Let's talk about the innovative camera mount. Uh, this camera mount actually has a built-in quick release plate and it will let you add your own type of a quick release plate underneath of it. Uh, so the transition between gimbal to your tripod, monopod or a slider is effortless and um, the most important part you will not have to rebalance the gimbal every time you remove the camera. There is also a vertical camera mount making it a two camera mount gimbal. Let's talk about the gimbal power motors. Let's say you balance the gimbal with a 24-105 f4 lens. A few minutes later you want to extend the lens to 105. So now you have to rebalance the gimbal. I mean you don't have to, you probably can get away doing that with, uh, without rebalancing the gimbal but you will put a lot of stress on the motors and eventually the motors will get out which is not a good sign. With this gimbal you don't need to worry. The motors are so strong that you can do that all day long you can put a Sony a7 III with a 24-105 and change the lens focal length however you want, as much as you want and the gimbal motors will observe the changes no problem. All you have to do is use the motor out of balance and you are done. And not only that, let's say you want to balance the gimbal with the lens extended all the way to 105. You can. There is plenty of room here to move the camera backward to compensate for the uh, front heavy setup and also there is a lot of width here you can fit a wide camera like the Blackmagic pocket camera and even some other video cameras by extending the base plate. Just a side note, the user guide suggests when you mount the camera on the gimbal make sure you slide the camera to the end of the arm to get the best performance. Now there is one problem I found with the camera mount. I could not remove the battery from the Sony a7 III while it was mounted on the gimbal because of the quick release plate covered the battery. In this case, you will need to release the plate, move it forward, replace the battery and rebalance the axis, but there is a solution for that and I will get to it later in the video. Now, if you didn't notice, this gimbal does not have a slanted arm that helps uh, with clearing the camera display from the arm axis, at least not out of the box, but you can remove the spacer from the arm and turn it into a slanted arm. Now, if you're going to leave it like that, then you will need to turn off the option of turning off the display when using the viewfinder. Otherwise, you will find that the uh, axis arm covers the viewfinder, which will turn off uh, the display. Now, Giant Crane 2S has six mode, pen following, locking, following, full range, POV, vortex, and the uh, go mode. It also has a standby mode which is the slipping mode. To toggle between the modes you will need to click on the M button 
If you click and hold the trigger, it will activate the following mode. Two clicks on the trigger will recenter all the access to the beginning point. Three clicks on the trigger to enter and exit the selfie mode. Now, if you don't press dead center on the trigger, it will not work. It was designed that way to make sure the trigger does not click by mistake while holding the gimbal. Now the following pen mode only activates the pen axis. Also in the pen following mode and the locking mode, you can manually position the camera in the pen and tilt axis. Just rotate and hold for a few seconds and let go. POV mode activates all axis. I also call it the airplane mode because of the roll. By the way, in the POV mode, the joystick is disabled. To use the vortex mode, you will need to move the joystick to the right or left. Go mode lacks the roll axis and also deactivate the joystick. The following mode does the same as the go mode, but you can roll with the joystick as well. Now, standby mode is to use whenever you have a downtime between shots or walking to a different location. Just make sure you locked all the access with the access locking mechanism. Or the other way around, make sure you are in the standby mode when you lock all the access with the access lock mechanism. A long press on the M button will enter or exit the standby mode. Uh, by the way, if you turn on the gimbal or got off the standby mode while the axes are locked, you will be alerted by a beep sound and a message on the display, axis locked. After you unlock the locking mechanism, press the M button to dismiss the alert. Now the last one is the portrait mode. In portrait mode you can only pan. Also having a portrait mode is an excellent addition to the gimbal. Many commercials are shot in portrait modes these days. You can sit mainly on a vertical mount TV in uh, boutique stores. The gimbal can also rotate 180 degrees which helps when shooting low close to the ground. For me it was a bit awkward to do that without holding the camera. You can also invert the gimbal when the gimbal is off and then turn it on. So as I stated before, the Crane 2S can easily deal with zoom lenses without rebalancing every time the focal length changes. So I tested it with the 24 to 105 f4 lens. I rebalanced the gimbal with a 24 mm focal length, then extended the lens to 105 mm. Now when I tried it, the footage was shaky. Then I changed the motor torque from low to medium, and I got great result even when the lens steady shot was off. So. If for some reason the gimbal does not perform as expected, just take your time to get familiar with all the gimbal settings. The Crane 2S powered by three Lion batteries. The batteries are very inexpensive. You can get four batteries around $20 on Amazon and never think about uh, running out of juice. Running time is claimed around 12 hours under lap condition. To me, it feels more like 10 hours. The Crane 2S come in a foam case in the case you'll find the gimbal itself. Quick release base, quick release plate, tripod, charger, three lithium batteries, lens support, lens support screw, camera cable controls, three Allen keys, and camera backing plate. The gimbal equipped with USB-C hub which is part of the tilt axis, Type-C port for transmitter and follow focus, and a Type-C camera control port. If you connect your camera with the provided camera control cable, you will be able to control some of the functions of your camera depending on your camera brand. With the Sony a7 III connected to the gimbal, you can start stop recording with the record button. Half press on the dial is for focus and a full press will snap a picture. You can also control the digital zoom with the right and left click on the dial. The camera can also get charged by the gimbal with the control cable. With the center camera, you can disable charging in the gimbal menu under the camera setting. To the left of the display is the follow focus wheel. It works with the optical follow focus motor. To the right of the display is the USB-C port for firmware update only. To access the gimbal menu, press at the bottom of the dial by the three dots. To navigate through the menu, use the dial. In the menu, you can custom the gimbal to your like as well tune the motors. You probably use the auto tune the most on the menu. The display will show you the mode battery indicator and if you connect it with your camera, you would see indication symbols at the top of the screen. Now let's talk about the app. I think Xeon uh, has some more work to do here. Uh, maybe they should check the application from the uh, Feiyutake AK2000S, 
By the way, I did a detailed review of the AK2000S. If you want to check it out, I will leave a link in the description. Now, the app layout feels cumbersome to me. Everything is very small. I felt discouraged uh, from using it, that, to be honest. In the app, you can go through the gimbal setting. You can use the joystick to control the gimbal. Uh, what I couldn't find was the reset button. Also, you can do a time-lapse, active panorama, and trajectory photography, if I pronounce it right. There's a nice tutorial by Jun that explains how to use all the features on the app. I will leave a link to the tutorials in the description. But the most exciting part of the app is the sync motion, which lets you control the gimbal with your uh, phone movement. So what do I think about the Crane 2S? First off, it's not a light gimbal. You will work your biceps and your forearms, especially if you are used to a small gimbal. I think you will benefit from adding a handle uh, on this gimbal. It will also help you with artistic movement. I know I will get one, uh, but this gimbal can do so much more. It is definitely a jump up from the smaller gimbal. I see it as a mid-range gimbal for serious videographers. And that's pretty much it. Again, if you like this video, it will be great if you could be part of this channel. So please consider subscribing and don't forget to click on the like button and the notification bell. There will be an affiliate link in the description for this gimbal. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next episode.